Today is December 2nd. Trey Amber Gay is joining us, and Gary Sanchez gets a birthday present from the Yanks. Let's do it. Let's talk about the Yankees. Talking Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy Jake. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks. Thank you very much for tuning in and hanging out with us for a little bit. My name is Jimmy and sitting next to me is Jake. And in the corner is producer Bug Bug Dude. A.K.A. Big Baby David, A.K.A. David, A.K.A. David, A.K.A. D. The Yankees have some news, but more importantly, we sat down with Trey Ambergi to get some huge follow-up questions from last episode about playing with Trey Turner and being the third in his family and Jose Fernandez and a lot of other stuff. Your thoughts, Jake? James, David. Yeah, Trey was cool, man. He had fun, uh, which was cool. He, uh, Yeah, I mean, we covered the spectrum from name, high school baseball, COVID stuff at the end, Yankees baseball, himself a little bit. That was fun. Um, you know, fun to connect the dots from last episode to, <laughs> to today. And uh, yeah, man, doing all right. Uh, we are kind of live right now in the middle of baseball getting the stove going. This was this was kind of a day we've been waiting for for the baseball hitters, uh, because and if you you know if you're a Yankee fan you you probably know the name Eddie Rosario. He's been on the Twins the past few years. Um, he kind of got non-tendered We've talked a little bit about it on the past couple episodes It's kind of the direction baseball's going They have ways to quantify value now That they didn't in the past So Eddie Rosario, who's been a guy in the middle of the Twins lineup For, you know, five, six years His contract number arbitration was up to $9 million. Uh, They basically decided they're not going to pay it They put him on waivers So any team in the league could have cl- claimed him for that price And nobody did So He's still finding out his results, but that story was going around Yankees land with Gary Sanchez because his salary number this year was going to be five seven five million. We've been alluding to it, um, and it looks like he's going to remain a Yankee on his birthday. On his birthday, so that's kind of the the good big news. Well, there's a lot to talk about with him moving forward. Just because they gave him a contract doesn't mean he's a starting catcher automatically, and yeah. doesn't mean he's good automatically again. But 0.0 chance they weren't going to do this. I tried to tell everyone a while ago because people were getting way too loud. Like it was yeah. actually an option. It wasn't. Uh, like it's, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. The uh, We've danced around the conversation numerous times. I mean, whether you want to call it supply and demand. I mean, potential, non-potential. I did a weird sales analogy. It, it just makes sense. You know, it, if you're pointing and you're saying, well, JT Real Muto is a free la- free agent. I mean, you just haven't been kind of keeping in touch with the Yankees and how they operate anymore. We don't just sign the top three free agents anywhere. Um, you know, it's modern baseball. They've genuinely made rules against that. And <laughs> Gary Sanchez is still, there's an argument to be made. He's the most talented catcher in baseball. I know we haven't seen that in a I long would time. not make that argument anymore. Talented? No. There's an we're, argument to be we're made. a long ways out. I really loved what you did last year, finding out that five of the six months in 2019 were really good. Yeah. I mean, and that's, again, and talent can be looked at differently. There's an argument Gary Sanchez is the most talented catcher in baseball for what he can do with the bat, his arm arm strength, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's been a while. He's stunk. He's stunk. We do not deny it. Do we love Gary's cuteness? Yes. Do we love when Gary has fun? Yes. Are we probably slightly too close to the situation? 
Yes, and wish we were closer. Want to hear bad news? Wish we were hugging Gary right now. Over 120 whales have died after being stranded off the coast of New Zealand. Come on. Stranded by their whale friends? You know, I think the sea kind of just, the currents. Anyone could get stranded. Oh, yeah. It's a big fear of you every day. Kind of. Yeah. No. Yeah. There's been times where I'm like, Jake could be stranded Could be here. stranded right now. Yeah. Um, sorry for the whales. It, and okay, <laughs> do we want to go back into that or no? I put the kibosh on Gary talk. Like I was trying. Oh, to I was get... talking about the whales. Oh, the whales. I mean, well, I have Google alerts for when know you whales get beached. So sometimes they turn sour like that. Sometimes right. it's really nice. Sometimes they get pushed right back into the ocean, and swim on their way. My end it's usually of... one, not one hundred and twenty. I mean, that's almost like they didn't get stranded. That's just a group of whales. Well, the currents push them to the beach, and they can't get they can't beat the current back into the ocean. Do you want to see the video? So they're on the beach. There's a video. I didn't know they hit the beach. I thought they were just lost in the ocean and like lost their food. So source. my Google alerts for beached whales. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's pretty sad. Man. I didn't have. Oh, I don't yeah, think you're gonna I'm not like this. That. No, 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 no. It's like 120 dead whales on the shore of this yeah, beach. Not into that. Sometimes um, it's awesome. Sometimes there's a huge whale and yeah. it, the whole community pushes it to freedom. Like, it's yeah. really beautiful. Other times they all die. Anyway, my I like your H&H conversation that you and BBD had. H&H, home and home. How do the you... two guys that may be non-tendered. Yeah, well, I want to tie the balloon knot on Gary real quick. Um, it was my statement right after the season. It's my statement the full way. I think it's going to be Higgy and Gary. They come into camp. They're going to say it's an open competition. Gary shows that he is more gifted than Higgy. I think Higgy's the first guy <laughs> to, like, admit that. Uh, and they'll give Gary a run. It, do you even want to speculate on Gary's leash for next year? A month? No. A I, month and a half? I think so much will change. Like, I I want to put the kibosh on Gary talk to, like... What will change? What? Like, they can still, like... Bring in another backup, or they can still come out and say, you know, they're going to split time, or Gary could get hurt, or Gary could look awful in the DR, or they're still in on McCann, apparently. They're still in on Yachty, apparently. Like, And the Gary conversation will pick up in February for me. Yeah, I mean, I think all those are fake. I think all those are agent leaks that when the Yankees are tied to a free agent, that makes a free agent sound better. I agree with you, but I'm just saying... That, like, we have to see him play in the DR. We have to see him play in spring training. Yeah. I know, there's a long way till this actually comes from. I don't think so. I think it's going to be the same story. Gary's going to look like Gary. He hit some bombs, and then he'll be the starter come the regular season, and he's got basically a month and a half to look like a decent baseball player. Yeah, I think that's – yeah, but we've been saying that for a while, and I think that's the plan. All right, that's what I wanted to talk about. I want to see the first time Cole pitches a game in spring training. That's when the next time I'll be cued in. Okay. Because I do not want personal catcher bullshit. Yeah. So. But. Two guys. Yeah. Maybe non-tendered. Yeah. Per year in BBD's calculations. What are the numbers on these guys? And who are they for the So audience? this was, we looked at the website the other day. Um, what was the website, Beavers? Do you remember? Uh, it was probably MLB Trade Rumors. MLB Trade at. Rumors. And they had a list of guys that were potential non-tenders. And they had guys like Eddie Rosario, Gary on there, some bigger names, some smaller names. And then the bullpen got really funky. There was a lot of Red Sox-Yankees game. There was three Yankee guys on the list. And again, this equation, if it doesn't make sense to you, is it's all t this is all tied to money. And the three Yankee names that were on the list were Sessa, who oh, Sess has been kind of good and he has kind of a semi important role on this team that didn't seem like it affected us. The two names that raised eyebrows were Heller and Holder. Yeah. The H's. I think Holder's supposed to enter uh, like around a million, which again is a lot of money. In baseball terms, it's not a lot of money. Um, but this all ties into a Yankees financial equation. Ben Heller, I think, is supposed to be around 700K. Really weird experience with the Yankees. There's been times he looks good. There's been he's he's just never seemed like a part of any plan. <laughs> what's minimum? Holder has what's minimum 
five fifty. So basically, the cost analysis is: Do you want to pay five hundred k less, four hundred fifty k less, to have someone who's not Jonathan Holder in your six? Isn't it two hundred fifty? That was Heller's number. Holder's like a million. So hold. So Heller, I think they just keep him if it's only two hundred k. Right. With Heller, it probably wouldn't be about the money as much as a roster like, spot because he's 29 been injured and gonna make more than the bare minimum so do they want to just try to resign to my it's not enough like more for me spot. to think that that comes into play and they want you want bodies you don't not want bodies if they need to dfa him at any time that they, they can yeah because that's what they'd be doing now so they can just do that later yeah it, it's 200k that really shouldn't be make or break but holder is 500k and that's like well would we rather take a gamble on Heller or Nelson or King or anyone else to fill a bullpen role for the minimum yeah 500 or pay a million for Holder who has been kind of a Swiss army knife they rely on him a lot more than they have then they back off so Holder I think is more interesting but I guess that they tender both because they need they're not in really a position to be getting rid of bullpen arms yeah, and that's that's the part I don't the part I don't know is like when do the paychecks start coming in because if it's not till you know next baseball season, I mean, why would you you could cut them at any time? Exactly. You know, so uh, we'll see. I mean, if there is roster stuff happening behind the scenes, like I, I does think, Holder have like add on trade value like Warren did? I don't know. That's the thing we don't know about the market right now, where it doesn't it doesn't seem like it. Like seems I'm sure- like you'd tender them because you there's more options moving forward. Where if you non tender them, then you're cutting out a lot of future options. I agree. And I, the money's I, not that crazy. I think the the way we just landed uh, on talking about it in the office was it's seventy five percent that both these guys should be back, which leaves you know a chunk that one of them isn't. We're a big Ben Heller pod. Um, as it's oh. universally known. Yeah, didn't we have a Ben Heller episode once? We always do, it seems like. So, uh, we'll see. I mean, it's kind of deep cut baseball stuff, but it's also that time of the year. And uh, this should fully kick off free agency. Um, the biggest hitter contract so far has been $1.75 million. Uh, Michael A. Taylor of the Nats goes to the Royals. So the hitters. Did all the Michaels get signed? Did all the Michaels? Mike Miner, Michael Taylor. Today was there was another Michael that got signed today. I think all the Mikes are getting picked up. Drew Smikely. Yes, that's one. If you say it like that. Um, Um, there was another Mike that got picked up. Been good for Michaels. So we'll look into the Michael thing. Michael Brantley's still a free agent. Come on, Matt. Michael Hermosillo. Oh, Hermosillo, our guy. Cubs signed him. Hermosillo in hell. I yelled that to him at the Talking Yanks event. Did you? Yeah. He's a friend. We follow each other on Insta- on Twitter now. You do? Yeah. Well, he got signed. Yeah. He got swooped up in the Michaels. Yeah. Minor league to the Cubs. Go Cubs. Uh, Morgan, Morgan Fost, live in the chat right now, and and I guess this does tie in. We talked about it on talking baseball. Mike Miner was signed, the veteran pitcher. You've probably seen him on on different teams versus the Yankees through the year. He got two for eighteen million, uh, not per year. That's you know around nine per math pod. And you know it, we're starting to get closer and closer to the story of what. Tanaka's contract could be. We still don't know the story of Tanaka, but legend. It it seems like we're somewhere between twelve million and eighteen million. Depends on years after that. But if Tanaka comes back to the Yanks, which again we've blindly assumed, I really don't know. Now it's weird. I don't have a grasp of what I think. It's weird. Um, but yeah, hopefully. Hopefully the hitters market starts taking off. Maybe DJ will start it. Talking heads around the industry still think that's happening. Who knows? Trade for Eddie Rosario? 
Eddie Rosario. I know people got excited I don't, about that. That was a joke. I don't want to trade yeah. for. Her. No, I don't think we will. Left lefty bat. Anytime a lefty bat is available, Yankees Nation gets excited about it. Um, but yeah, and again, it's it's new new age baseball. If if you guys aren't that into it, I mean, it's fine. Enjoy baseball, love it. But uh, Eddie Rosario, you probably look on paper, he's twenty eight homers a year, a hundred RBIs. You know, kind of what you'd picture as a prototypical middle of the lineup guy. His defensive stats aren't there. He's not an OBP guy, and basically Minnesota says we can we can use that nine and a half million differently. And or just sign team. him for less. Yeah, and they're going to try to do that. And again, that's where baseball is mean. It's missing out on how the sport should be. Imagine that was like a, any older job. It's, it's a nightmare. Like oh, a forced so emotion. In Eddie, pay? we just, I don't know if you just saw, but we just allowed anyone in the league to sign you for that amount of money. So now we want you back. Like, dude, That's, I would I would be double bird so hard. The report I, would genuinely, I saw about their decision to do that was that it was seen as, like, doing him a favor because then if a team picks him up, that means they're planning to tender him around that money mark. It's um, just a weird thing. You could, But you could go either way. It's just not good for baseball. The system's bad. It's just not good for baseball. Hey, this is what it says you're worth. We don't think it. Anyone's gonna pay no. you that much So we gave them all the chance yeah. And they all agreed man You're not worth that So well, you want to take this contract That's lower instead Yeah I mean I'd be double birds and literally, Trev did it right literally, It happened to Trev yeah. He told us on Talking Baseball Go well, listen Literally take less money To go play for the Texas Rangers And say Like screw you guys Yeah Um. So that's baseball in 2020 a little bit Feel like there's something else I was going to stumble. Is that all? I was about to throw it to our interview. Into awesome. Oh, Ooh, news. Oh yeah. Tom Brenneman says he embarrassed his family with his use of an anti-gay slur. So. Ooh. Who's Tom know. Brennan? He's the oh the guy. Uh, He's yeah. the guy who said the anti-gay slur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Why do you say that? Huge. I mean, it's got to be part of an interview we did. Do not remember that. No, no, no. Why did he just say that? Why quote? did the oh, apology oh, oh, come oh, oh. out now? You know what I mean? Is it, it's probably part of like an interview he's doing, and that's just one quote they're pulling. Yeah, it's like just the think. line the Post put out. It's like, God, oh, what makes you The you Post. Think? Dude, newspapers are so strong right now yeah, as they're Mike dying. Because that's... It's nuts. Anyway. All right. Throw it to Trey. Throw it to Trey. After last episode, I just DM'd him. Or did I DM him on the episode? I think I DM'd him on the episode and just said, are you the third Tommy in your family? Yeah. He said, yes. And then I said, can you come on the pod to discuss? <laughs> <laughs> and here he is. Baseball! We are joined by Tommy Wayne Ambergie. You probably know him as Trey Ambergie. Or Bergie. Or Bergie. We're not sure. We're kind of coming to you. So, Trey, what's going on, man? Uh, everything's good. Uh, I mean, if you want to call me Bergie, call me Bergie. That's my uh, that's actually my PlayStation name, Bergie the Third. That's how that works. Twitter handle. <laughs> yeah, Twitter handle. That's why we knew that. We're We're – Oh, I didn't even go on Twitter, so I didn't. We even also know. knew that. Here. <laughs> so we went down a deep dive yet last yeah. episode. The Trey Amberg deep. I'm not sure what started. We're just missing Yankees baseball, and we're like, "Where's Trey? What's he up yeah. to?" <laughs> uh, and then we started googling, and then a lot came up. Well, was the Twitter two liked tweets in the last five years, about four years apart. Uh, so <laughs> four. <laughs> Before, probably like April, I had a bunch of stuff, but I hadn't gone on. And I was like, you know, with all the weird people out there just trying to find things, I'm just going to wipe it clean. So yeah. I just up, wiped it clean. to the I next mean, thing we found. <laughs> <laughs> um, tra- Tommy Wayne the third. Is it just Tommy the third or is it Tommy Wayne the Thomas? Uh, no, it's Tommy. Tommy Wayne okay. and Brigitte the third. And were you oh. Trey from birth? Like your parents mm-hmm. knew we're going to call him Trey? Yeah. 
All right. Yeah, I've had it since I was born. I, that's the only thing I go by. If people want to call me Tommy, they call me Tommy, but it's usually just Trey. Does your dad have a nickname? Tom. Or uh, within the family, he's TJ, Tommy okay. Jr. Okay. So, I was gonna right. I was gonna ask how much Bergy comes out on the baseball field, but Trey is such a good sports name. <laughs> I mean, no Bergy, I've honestly never never hear it. No one called really. That. Okay, yeah. we could start working in the Bergies. Hopefully, you know, like, this Judge would be a bigger fan of Bergy the way he nicknames guys. Yeah, Bergs, would... then it goes to Bergs. <laughs> Bergs. Have a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have some fun with it. Yeah. I've heard everything under the sun. So, if you, do you have any kids? No kids. I got a actually got a dog sitting here barking at random things out the window. But do you feel no a kids. lot of pressure to have Tommy the fourth? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. No. Good. We've right. we've had some discussions, but no rush. We're we're still young. Nickname Quad. That'd be a bad <laughs> nickname. <laughs> Does any language have a cool Or maybe the fourth? nickname's Homer in a baseball family. Oh, um, four's the Homer. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. What's his grandpa then retroactive nickname? Just like, <laughs> out? <laughs> we'll stay away from the family names. Or that, sing, Do single. we want to do the next name segue single. where we landed next? Yeah, so then we landed next. I don't know how we landed here. Oh, you man. played with Trey Turner in high school. Did, yeah, yeah. So I, I, just, I just pulled it up. You were a freshman. He was a junior and yeah. sophomore senior sophomore did senior, he yeah. was he like dude you're not a real trey <laughs> you're tom uh, i'm a real i'm birth name trey no he <laughs> never brought it up i don't i don't remember how we got around like the name being thrown out and not like looking every time i don't remember how it happened but no it was it was smooth smooth sailing no problems with that because, yeah, I good. mean, the, the the article that's out there that people have probably brought up to you before is you guys played against Jose Fernandez, and, I mean, I think Trey Turner was leadoff, you were cleanup. So we're like, as baseball junkies, <laughs> I mean, we see that. And, I mean, that's that's baseball crack to a degree. Um, I mean, that was crazy, just first inning. Like, we kind of got into it with Jose before the game because we were, like, we we're obviously fired up. We know, like – his name and like right. what he's about. So we were trying to get under his skin. Uh, I don't know if it, it worked, but I mean, we put up what five runs, 10 hits. That's the most he's ever given up in high school. Okay. Um, I don't know if the, you read the story. I don't know what it said, but uh, his trace first of that, actually, he broke his bat like in half his metal bat. Aluminum. What? Aluminum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, the barrel, like, a chunk of the barrel came out of the bat, and then the next pitch he got another bat. Next pitch at a triple to right center. So it was, it was like a foul ball with a metal bat chipped off. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, so you're kind of speaking to our souls a little bit because I mean <laughs> the energy of high school sports, and you know Jose Fernandez, the hype, and to have the first at bat a broken aluminum bat. That yeah. place must have been going nuts. <laughs> I mean, we were we were all like, oh, this could this could be a long day if this is going on." And then next pitch, he does that. And we're like, "Oh, all right, here we go." <laughs> if he start, if he starts sawing off aluminum bats, yeah. this could be a tough I mean, day. He was pumping it that day. I want to say he was up to like ninety eight. Jeez, oh, and his his obviously his slider was disgusting, but I mean, he was bad at cleanup as well. Mm -hmm. So I he was a senior. You were a sophomore. I mean, that's. Yeah. It's a it pretty, was... pretty fun time. We don't have the full stats. It says you were hitting 391 at the time. So, congrats. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you do yep. against Jose? Uh, it was one for four, the sack fly. Okay. okay. So, yeah. I had some good at bats. I mean, obviously, he's going to succeed more than I'm going to succeed against <laughs> him. But um, it, was, I mean, it was a good day. We had, We were winning, actually, going into the last inning. Oh, we uh, then what? Oh, no. We were up 5-4. I think we had one out, and then it was like running first and second, and he came up and hit a homer. No. Then, Jesus. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> we, well, sorry, sorry we brought a, it up. <laughs> no, no, no. He's a – our scouting report was literally he's a dead red hitter, and our closer was like one of the harder throwers in the area. And uh, obviously, you know, you know, challenge it, and he 
He won. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. We have pictures now in the article. Oh. I don't know which one you are, Trey, but you're Probably in this tall. picture. Probably tall, back row. I don't know. But then look at this picture of. Depends uh, what you're looking at. Let me see if I can flip it around. <laughs> Got a lot of shit here. Uh, yeah, I'm in the back row somewhere. I think towards my right. Wait, I'm looking inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. I want to say so. I'm on that side. That one guy in the middle looks too tall. That looks like a classic. I think I got you right here. Pitch. Second from the right yeah. players. I'm pretty positive. Look at this picture of Jose after it. Yeah, he he looks a like day. a god in high school. He had a good day. Mm-hmm. He was. This is him. So did he go back to the mound <laughs> after hitting the home run and then close yeah, it out? And then set us down. One, two, three. I'm starting to think you guys are different kind of athletes than I was in high school. Because my stories don't start or end or have any of the middle of that. No. <laughs> you were a comparison to um, Brett Lashley. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just read a name on. Just sheet. read a name off your uh, roster. Lashley. Let's. Uh, we were Lashley was the complete center. opposites. Yeah, he was <laughs> second baseman, gonna get on anyway. How and yeah, that was, so that's Jake. Those are our stories. Yeah, that's that's our that's our. <laughs> Please hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Curveball to the arm would be phenomenal. Ideal. <laughs> Change up to the calf. Oh man! Hey, well, any, anyway, you we want to talk about like what the hell this year was for you. I mean, geez. spring training, you're getting your reps in with the club. Oh, man. Your stats, you're hitting 300. Mm-hmm. Good OBP. I was looking at that as well. And then COVID hits, and then I mean, with no minor leagues, like walk us through your oh, year. Man. man, my year's been. Very, very stressful, as you can only imagine. Mm. Um, I mean, yeah, I was feeling good in spring training. I was like, man, we'll see what happens coming out of camp. I was in – I was. we are going in the last week of camp. I don't know what was going to happen. Um, obviously, me making the team was a long shot with the, how many outfitters we have, obviously. But, it's like, obviously, I'm going to go go to Scranton and have a good start. And if someone gets hurt, stay in. And then we get shut down and – Go home for whatever it was. Now it's not whatever nine months, ten months. But um, going into June when they started making the rosters, I was like, oh, I had I had a good year last year. I had a good spring. I should be there. And I get the call that I'm not going to make the first round and stay ready just in case you know we need, we need to fill in. But uh, besides that, I mean. Just trying to trying to stay positive, but it's it's been tough, honestly. It's been tough. Is there any like speakeasy baseball or any like? Do you have like some guys in the area because that you can go, you could go throw or get our bats or anything, or you just been shut down? Uh, we had there's a guy that I, like my, I went to college around this area in Tampa, so my college coach knew like a guy that was with the Dodgers. He needed some. He's a pitcher, so he needed some like live at bats. So I got to face him twice, and then he kind of went ghost. I don't know what happened, but how it so you got two up? How the two up bats? So you pumped him? Yeah. (laughs) No, (laughs) I did not. This is so I didn't hit. Say whatever March thirteenth, we got shut down. I didn't hit from then until probably like the end of April, and that's when the bats were. So try seeing ninety one, (laughs) ninety two. Yeah. Not seeing pitching for two almost two months. It's makes contact, but there you go. No, no, no good results. It's crazy. Has there been any word or news about spring this year? Like, I mean, I I think Uh, they're waiting to find out if they can have spring training this year. But yeah, so everyone, everything I've asked and would have heard, it's like stay ready for normal time. So get ready for February. That's that's pretty much been the message throughout. Because I know, I mean, we. We get shocked sometimes about the Yankees organization communications, um, and it's it's kind of mind blowing sometimes. Like we we have these conversations, whether it's a guy who gets hurt or something, and we're like, so, so you know, did did you have like every week an update? And they're like, no, we I came back, <laughs> and then we saw them. So that's that's kind of been 
you've gotten a couple stay readies, and that's kind of par for the course. Yeah, I mean, you hear all these like stories of other organizations having Zoom calls like once a week. We've had two in the past eight months. Mm, yeah, it kind of blew our mind when we were like, "How in contact does everyone stay?" And they're like, zero. Like it's like a, okay. a halfway call and then a call. Hey, springs next week or something like that. Which <laughs> I don't know. Yankees change that. Like, uh, yeah, get someone that keeps the players in the loop would be a good yeah. idea if I was in charge. I think. Or yeah. How many people? I don't, have? To, I don't want to sit here like bash them. <laughs> no, I mean, no, you're yeah. good. We're we're so, doing it. This is our suggestion. <laughs> So, yeah, better communication would be great. I mean, I would like to know. I know, obviously, you don't know dates yet. You can't tell us, hey, spring training's happening. That's obviously winter meetings is, what, next week. So, yeah, we'll figure that out then. But, I mean, give us some type of idea, you know. I think it is, I think it, it is different, especially during the, the shutdown and the restart because they didn't know. Like, no one knew. No, so, it's it kind of like the only update is, like, we still don't know. But even that would be nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, did the only update we got was like, hey, we're still going to pay you. That's it. Well, there you go. Dang. Then, here, <laughs> here's, here's the last day of pay, and then you're on your own. That's, yeah. that's what we got. Nuts. So. I was looking at your 2019. 22 bombs. OPS was nice. Everything was looking good. I mean, you had a, a 10 day stretch in 2019 where you hit like six bombs and like 15 RBIs. When was that stretch? I don't even remember. <laughs> I had it up I, somewhere, but now I'm on Trey my, Turner's pages. My, <laughs> I remember my first, my first week up there and then I had some stretches throughout the year, but well, I'll, I'll, I'll spin off of that. Cause I always, I get lost in these numbers and I love hearing the stories. I, I we talked to Higgy last year and he had a big spike one year, and he's like, yeah, I, you know, I reworked the whole thing. My swing wasn't working. It didn't happen. You mm-hmm. kind of have a nice gradual thing going the last three years. I mean, you basically 120-plus games, but 14 homers, 16 homers, 22 homers. The OPS is going up. I mean, is it just grind hard every day, 1% better? Are there different things you work on year to year, or what's uh, what have you been doing? So. Oh. I've learned after 2017 in Tampa, working with Eric Duncan, stop paying attention to, like, the batting average. I know how, obviously, analytics are saying that nowadays, but, like, it's true in a sense that the batting average nowadays doesn't tell the whole story about yeah. what's actually going on. Because if you go into – if you – we broke down my – my analytical numbers from 2017, I hit what, like 240, I think it was. And But, like, if you look at it, I had, like, 52 hard outs. You take those away, that's 52 extra hits. Yeah. That's a 280, 290 batting average. Like, you just – you never know. But, I mean, it's – especially last year working with Phil Plantier, it was aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Like, don't – don't go up there taking pitches and waiting for one pitch that you're going to get on the first pitch. Might as well swing. That's what I did yeah. the majority of the year, and it paid off. Um, but, yeah, just going to the field every day, working on – I had a bad night, watch the video, go into the cage, work on it, go out and play. It was, and just let the results take care of themselves, you know? Yeah. May 22nd, June 7th, 14 games, seven bombs. And you hit two off of Memorial Day. Ryan Firebend. Firabend. Blue Jays. Yeah. yeah. So no you more. remember that? Yeah. Like, come on, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Come on. He's got time in the show. Yeah. Back- he was a knuckleballer. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I don't I don't know if I was leading off that game or not. Yeah, yeah. Lead off home run and then in the third. Off, yeah. So he went knuckleball. Left it up, pulled it, Homer. Next to that, try to go curveball, <laughs> first pitch, and yeah. You say that that's, was worse than the knuckler. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, if a guy's a main knuckleball pitcher, the curveball ain't yeah. great. <laughs> nah, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brian Band. We didn't think we were gonna get him this episode. Yeah, well, I also found this picture of him, which I think is pretty 
ridiculous. Oh, uh, that's such a classic uh, baseball yeah. pose show. It's like a, it had... it's like a five year old baseball pose. Like mom's like, I like that one, son. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had right. four four homers off that guy that last year. Four? Yeah. So you know that. that. So I said that name. You were like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I had two... love when fear bend comes up. <laughs> I want to say I had two at their place. I don't know if I had two at our place against him, but I had two in the same game when he pitched. One so off him. What is that? The Bisons. The Bisons. Yeah. Bisons. The bison, yeah. Let's see. One, two, three, four. So you had you had two games with two homers against the Bisons. You think that was yeah. him? You, you I know, I know. Three of them were off him. I don't Jeez. know if the fourth one was off him or not. Nope, it wasn't actually. It was the same game. Yeah. So who are Good. I'm Fireman? Who who's the best spread? Who's the best uh, Yankee Ooh. injury comes down for a week? Like, who's coming down, and you guys are like, hell yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, all of them. Part, <laughs> but they're, they're paying for a nice meal. Uh, last year we had, obviously, a bunch of guys. But um, there was sushi one night. We had Longhorn Steakhouse one night. Um, I think, was it last year Maven was with us? Maven, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he bought us a nice, nice uh, a taco joint over in Columbus when he was rehabbing. So it all depends where we are, honestly. But all the spreads are good. <laughs> There's nice, someone out there. Meals. We won't make you say it, but you know, we'll get. Yeah. We'll let them know. Like, dude, pick it up. You know, someone. <laughs> there's. I don't know who it is. I heard that. Well, this is a pitcher. Um, Gonzalez, Gio, was he down there? Was that? Yeah. I heard he was yeah. awesome for the pitchers. Yeah. Uh, someone he was awesome was, for the whole team. Yeah. <laughs> someone Scranton said he was like the the best guy that came through Scranton. He was awesome. Uh, he actually bought the entire team Jordans. Yeah, that's what I heard, yeah. That's how you win over that's a pretty bunch of, nice. <laughs> that's how you win over a bunch of 22 to 25 guys. <laughs> yeah. 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 He literally <laughs> opened his computer, logged on his, his account for Nike, and said, hey, order whatever you want. <laughs> okay. <What a> flex. <laughs> I don't know what the okay. answer to this is going to be, but there's probably some people that care what you get, what kind of shoe. That's probably got, the famous way to ask that. I got some red uh, Jordan like trainers. Okay. They're like running shoes. I'm not a big like basketball shoe guy, so. Me neither. That's why I, so, I thought I was going to have. got scared. I was like, I have no idea how to ask this, but I know there's people that will probably be interested <laughs> in the answer. But you're with me. Oh, nice. I I don't. They're at my parents' house, so I'd show you, but I'm not there, so. All right, man. Hey, well, thank you for hopping on. It was a very weird rabbit hole that happened, and now we have our, all our answers about the name and everything. We'll be if if spring training happens, we'll be down there. You'll be yep. down there. It so will we'll probably, happen. Well, yeah, well, it, yes, it, it will, will happen. There's happen. There's gonna be a full season this year, baseball. After football, just basically gave everyone the middle finger. Yeah, baseball's gonna do yeah. the same. Basketball schedule is out. Baseball's coming. So we'll see yeah. you in Tampa. We'll come yeah, say hi for sure. Absolutely. You have to shave Sounds the beard. Good. Is that upsetting? <sighs> I mean, my wife already doesn't like it, so okay. <laughs> <Win -win>. So, <laughs> so it would be more benefit for her than me. <laughs> oh, last question: How's golf yesterday? Mm. I've golfed better. Okay, okay. all right. Yeah. We've all I, done uh, it. We all have. I got. I actually got COVID, so I had to shut it down for a couple of weeks. Damn. Forgot, how was your experience? I got it back in. When did I get it? Couple Late August. Ago. Late August. Yeah. Er uh, it yeah, was miserable, September. honestly. It's uh, it's no joke. I don't want to say the wrong things because, like, I was no, you're good. I'm, al I'm alive. Yeah, but like, I would not wish it on anyone. Yeah, because it. Did your I smell the, go away? No, I kept my smell and my taste. My wife lost her smell and taste. She still doesn't have it. It's been over it's a crazy. week now. Yeah, um, my fiance still has a cough from it, but I'm I'm. I'm fine now. I lost my smell, and it was mm -hmm. the weirdest thing because my brother was like, just go sniff candles or, like, like cook bacon and sniff it, and I did it, and I was like, whoa. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I had, like, three gee. days of severe chills and then four days of severe exhaustion, which was actually worse than the chills because I was just, like, laying in bed for 20 hours straight, and I was like, this sucks. Mm -hmm. So I got it on. I started having symptoms on a Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday... Friday, or I got tested like I think Tuesday, 
So Wednesday, Thursday, I, I didn't do anything. Obviously, I was trying to be smart because I kind of knew I had it. And I just couldn't move. Like, it was, like, physically impossible to move. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday just got terrible. Like, the pains. I don't know if you yeah. had body pains, but I my, had, My fiance like, had body the pains. Worst. I didn't. Yeah. It was, like, I could not move. And my wife was like, let's go for a walk. Let's walk the dog. I was like, I, it's, I can't. No. no <laughs> like, I can't even get you. up. Like, I did it, but, like, it was not fun. Uh, you're good now? Uh, Good now, yeah. I got good to hear. I was, you can hear it. I got congestion still, but um, other than that, I'm good. Cool. Well, that's good, good to hear. All right, man. Thank you for hopping yeah. on. We'll we'll stay in touch. For sure. Thanks for having me. Have a yep. good one. See you, bud. Take it easy, brother. Baseball. And there he was. Thanks for listening, guys. That wraps up today. We will be back on Monday. And like Jake said, I think with all this non-tender tender tender winding down, I think free agency for hitters and a lot of players may start to be moving and maybe we get ourselves a Christmas present before December 25th. That would be very nice. Final last words, Jake? Love you guys. I think we're going to have guests next week. That should be pretty exciting. Oh, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, DJ, DJ Signs. Four years, 80 million. Damn. Wow. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees. <laughs>